All right. It's 1102. My name is Sean Grant with Takar Solutions. I wanted to thank everyone for joining uh, today's webinar focused on really the evolution of CRM. Uh, today's focus is going to be on marketing automation. And we've got some terrific uh, speakers lined up. Uh, and we think some, some valuable information coming your way. So thanks again uh, for joining. Looks like we've got quite a crew uh, uh, on from Takar Solutions. And then it looks like we have quite a few uh, attendees on this as well. And, and rightfully so. I think marketing automation and digital marketing and the way that it interacts with CRM and specifically Pivotal CRM, uh, super important today. And uh, one of the things that, Takar Solutions identified several years ago uh, was that when Market First, which was the marketing automation solution that, that Pivotal acquired and had integrated, when Market First uh, went away, uh, there was really nothing else available other than the email blasting tool uh, that was available out of, out of Pivotal CRM. And that's just not enough today. You need a lot more intelligence to effectively market and the other thing is to not get yourself in trouble because there's, there's definitely pitfalls to marketing automation, um, sending out emails. You've got to have rules in place, constraints. You can't just go and buy a list and blast it out. So today's uh, event is really going to be focused around marketing automation, uh, uh, interacting with CRM. And specifically, we're going to focus today on, on SharpSpring. And the reason is... Uh, it's a product that, that, number one, we sell and we use internally. Uh, our guest speaker today also uh, uses it internally uh, with his business, and, and we'll get into that a little bit more here. So um, from Takara's perspective, we have a couple of connectors that connect to marketing automation solutions. One of them is Marketo, which a lot of you uh, run and are familiar with. It's, I would say, one of the 800-pound gorillas out there. And then SharpSpring, which is a comparable solution to Marketo. Uh, we like it because it's, it's, uh, has all the capabilities of Marketo and we were a Marketo customer. It's just SharpSpring uh, costs about a third of, of Marketo and that, that was what was appealing to us um, was the capabilities uh, and then the low cost. And then the other thing that we like about SharpSpring is the way that they uh, work with us, uh, very accessible, uh, uh, certainly uh, get back to us right away when we have issues, questions, concerns, things like that. Um, and we didn't have as much luck uh, with Marketo. Um, so today's presenters, myself, I'm going to go through a few slides, again, introducing you to Takara, uh, talking about marketing automation, Sharp Spring, and Pivotal. Uh, we've got Mitch, Mitch Levinson, who's president and founder of Marketing Relevance. We'll talk a little bit about Mitch and our history with Mitch uh, here in a few slides. And then we've got Steve Lukowitz, who's our VP of sales. Um, and he will be presenting a little bit later on uh, in this presentation as well. So next slide, Mitch. So the event rules, this is set up through Zoom as a webinar. Uh, all the lines will be muted uh, except the presenters. Uh, we will also be recording uh, this session. So it's recorded right now. Uh, afterwards, we will send out uh, a link uh, to the recording that we uploaded to our YouTube channel and provided there. In fact, all of our webinar report recordings will be uh, available to you and your colleagues uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, there will be Q&A handled throughout. Um, so if you have questions, I encourage you to uh, you know, throw out a chat. Um, I've got Steve, we have John Hodgson, uh, and myself, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to uh, answer questions and uh, uh, either at appropriate times throughout the presentation or we'll do it at the end. Or if your question doesn't get answered, we'll be sure to follow up with you so we do have uh, a response to your question. We want to make sure all questions are answered and we don't, we don't end this uh, prematurely without your question being addressed. On the event, again, we run out of time, we'll give you a call and, and, uh, or send you an email with the, the response to that question. Um, and it, you know, at the end, after this, if you have any questions, uh, obviously contact your Takara rep for, for any follow-on questions, demonstrations, 
uh, additional information you're looking for, either Steve, uh, John Hodgson, Mark Fillingham, uh, will be able to uh, uh, take care of you from that perspective. Next slide. So this is actually uh, our third webinar, uh, second focused on Pivotal. We also did one on Saratoga CRM uh, last week. And uh, it, it's really the series that we uh, kicked off uh, about a month and a half ago. We're gonna do these every six weeks or so, relevant topics. Um, and it's not just gonna be about Takar products, but we encourage you to send in topics that you'd like to see us discuss. Um, uh, we're, we're looking for ideas, certainly. We've got a list, uh, but once we exhaust that list, we wanna keep it going with, with relevant topics um, that, uh, that you wanna hear about. So uh, certainly encourage you to send uh, any topics you'd like, like to hear for future webinars, and we'll continue doing these. Um, again, plenty of Q&A at the end of each webinar, um, and if we run out of time, we'll, we'll follow up with you. We want to make sure uh, that your questions are answered. Um, and in this, you can send an email to Steve Lukowitz if you've got any additional suggestions. Next slide, please. So a quick intro on Takara. Some of you attended some of our previous webinars. And so this might be a repeat, my apologies for that. But um, for those that are attending for the first time, uh, just wanna share with you who Takar Solutions is. So Takar Solutions founded in 2019, 100% focused uh, really on pivotal customers. We do some other things like Saratoga, uh, Onyx. So really uh, Avalon products we're focused on today. Um, Pivotal is our specialty. We've been doing Pivotal for a majority of the folks on our team over 20 years. Um, and really we saw an opportunity to fill gaps in Pivotal functionality uh, through Takar products, or we call them connectors. And those connectors connect to third-party uh, applications such as Marketo, SharpSpring, uh, Gmail, uh, Salesforce, because uh, we have customers out there that you know, pit that run Pivotal, but they've got pockets of Salesforce throughout their, uh, their company. So th those are the connectors. And certainly that is also an area we're looking for ideas of customers, uh, you know, see a need for something they'd like us to explore building a connector to. I know one of the ones that uh, we had a few customers come to us for was DocuSign. Um, and so we have that connector underway right now um, being built and uh, hopefully we'll have a webinar around it uh, in the near future. So, you know, we're, we're taking our lead from customers. When customers tell us they need something or they want something, they want us to explore uh, a connector to another product that can make their Pivotal CR more complete, we, we will absolutely do that. And that's kind of our secret sauce with our 20-year veteran consultants when they are what we call on the bench um, and not working on a project, um, we build product. That's what we do with any downtime we have. Um, we build product. We're, we're or, or you know, we're we're working with Avalon uh, to to better uh, pivotal CRM in some way, whether it be uh, testing solutions, those sorts of things. So, it's um, uh, we try to maximize any downtime we have that benefits our customers down the road. Absolutely, um, we've got a history of of long term support of our clients dating back really to, to the Pivotal days. I, I worked at Pivotal for 11 years. Everybody on our team worked for Pivotal at one time, including, uh, including Mitch, our guest speaker today. And again, I'll talk a little bit about that, um, which makes it a little bit interesting. Um, uh, but basically the last 20 plus years, and in, in, in my case, 24 years, um, we've been working with Pivotal customers, supporting Pivotal customers and adding value in the form of functionality uh, to Pivotal customers for, you know, a long, long time. Uh, consultants on our on our team average 18 years, at least 50 projects. We've got people with over 100 Pivotal projects uh, that they've got experience with. And we also have a successful track record delivering over 450 uh, CRM projects with a 9.9 .9 out of 10 for customer satisfaction ranking. So we're really proud of that. Uh, next slide. And I'd like to point out how we're different. So, you know, we're privately owned. Um, we're, uh, you know, not focused on short-term goals, uh, next quarters, profitability, those sorts of things. Our goal is happy Pivotal customers and supporting Pivotal customers. 
and, and adding value in the form of connectors and, and third-party products that can plug into Pivotal. That's what we're focused on. That's what we do. And um, we're, you know, that, that is our livelihood. I, I mentioned in here, every consultant on our team, Pivotal CRM is their livelihood. It's what they've been doing for the last 15 or 20 years. It's what they want to do. Um, you know, any of these folks could jump and, and go work with, you know, newer technology or other sexier technology, but they stay with Pivotal CRM because they love the customers. They love the product. They love the things that we're doing. Uh, it, ex it really, it excites them. It keeps, it keeps them interested. And that's why we've been able to build such a strong team here to look to car solutions, great customers, great products, and uh, really a lot of fun working with these technology products. Um, we're a stable company. We've, we have not had any layoffs in 12 years. We've lost three employees in 12 years. Uh, today we're, we're 33 people strong. Um, and, you know, we, we, we've got some different specialties. I mentioned to you, we do Saratoga now, which is an Avalon uh, product. A lot of you know that, that, that Avalon has pivotal uh, CRM, Saratoga CRM and Onyx CRM. Um, so we do that. Um, we also do uh, Sharp Spring, uh, as well as we have Salesforce practice. We've got some tools for migration. So we've, we've kind of really, our, our, our lead is, is from the customer. So our customers uh, ask us for things that we either build or, or, or come up with that solution. And, and in some cases, we'll, we'll, we'll market it to other customers. Um, so Takar been in business for 12 years. And again, 100% focused during that 12 years on Pivotal customers. That's what we do. And we're, we, we really like to touch base with the customers uh, on a regular basis, really a monthly basis. And um, the people that are calling on you that you're working with, um, Steve Lukowitz, uh, John Hodgson, and, and Mark Fillingham, um, you know, they've been in these roles forever. And uh, you, you all know them. And in a lot of cases, these guys had the same roles when they worked at Pivotal. Um, there's no turnover in those roles. We feel that is the most key role, um, you know, where you've got an experienced, very seasoned, pivotal person calling on you, helping you solve your problems and uh, or scoping your project out, whatever it may be. But somebody that's trusted, that you've known for a long time. You know, we're not a revolving door of resources. We're, we're stable and, and, and hopefully uh, you appreciate that. Uh, ne next slide, please. Very good. I, I, uh, I'm super excited uh, to introduce Mitch Levinson, uh, who is our keynote speaker today. Uh, Mitch goes back with us about 20 years. So Mitch used to work for Pivotal. Uh, he was a part of our professional services team. He was one of our senior project managers, implemented a number of Pivotal CRM solutions. And uh, about 20 years ago, he left Pivotal and started his own company called Marketing Relevance. It's a digital marketing firm uh, that does all things marketing, whether it be content, website, uh, search engine optimization, marketing automation, uh, a very well-rounded uh, marketing automation uh, or digital marketing company. And uh, Mitch is, is good friends with us. He does also Sharp Spring um, for marketing automation, which is uh, what we do. In fact, we're, we're the ones that got him turned on to that a couple of years ago. And since then, he's built out quite a practice and quite a business around Sharp Spring. And we thought it'd be best to bring in an outsider from Takara uh, that can speak of Sharp Spring, how they use it internally, best practices, those sorts of things, but coming from really a professional uh, digital marketing consultant uh, that, that, you know, really lives and breathes this technology every single day. So we thought incredibly valuable uh, to bring Mitch Levinson on board here uh, to speak to you all. So I'm going to turn it over to Mitch and uh, Mitch, thanks for, for joining today. Looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thanks, Sean. Uh, really appreciate that introduction. We, uh, yeah, I've known uh, uh, Sean and, and the Pivotal team, Steve, for the better part of 20 years. Um, and just to, just to give you all a little bit of background with me, I started as a sales professional. And because of the technical streak that I have that runs through me, uh, I went back to school to, got my, to get my MBA in e-commerce and computer information systems back in the late 90s. And, and for those of you that are old enough to remember, they didn't really have a digital marketing degree 
back in the late 90s, uh, uh, especially for MBA. So I'm part of the first graduating class in a, in a business administration, uh, an MBA program that has a digital marketing degree and have been pretty much doing that uh, ever since. You know, I, I uh, again, because of that streak uh, within me and because of my uh, knowledge and excitement of sales, the sales process, uh, CRM, uh, and automating things to make it easier uh, so that companies can, with their sales team, work, uh, work smarter and not harder. Uh, I, I uh, uh, worked for Pivotal for, for a, a while uh, and then started my own company that focused on a lot more of the, the digital marketing side of that business. And it's really because I love doing something new every single day. Uh, we have a new challenge uh, approaching us. Technology changes rapidly on a regular basis. You know, what we once thought was cool and hip is now old. Uh, and we're always looking for, for the next best thing um, to help us automate and make our lives uh, and our salespeople more, more efficient and effective. And, you know, we have, we have clients around the country. I lived in Atlanta for 10 years before I moved uh, back up to Chicago. Uh, so we help companies in a lot of different industries. You know, I built the first blog for Equifax and we ran their content marketing for five years um, and uh, uh, before they took it in house for their digital marketing agency. So I have a little bit of uh, uh, experience in, in working with a lot of different industries and a lot of different local markets and a lot of different uh, uh, ways with the public, uh, consumers, business to business, B2C and that sort of thing. So uh, I wanna focus today though on marketing automation and how to make it easy and simple for your sales team to, to have the tools that they need to do the best job that they can. And if you, if you think of the analogy of your marketing automation engine to be the, the pit crew behind uh, your driver and you're trying to win the race, you're trying to help them achieve their goals, you're trying to you know, drive top line revenue, you know, your marketing automation engine really helps them uh, like, a, like a, a race car pit crew stay focused on the goal. It helps them remain salespeople and helps them with the touch points that they need so that when the customer, when the prospect is ready to make a purchase decision, the salesperson is there ready uh, and, and in their wheelhouse doing their thing. Uh, because they have this kind of 360 degree view of of the communication history and uh, everything that's gone behind uh, it. Because in today's world, the buying cycle has changed. It's changed not only in B2C, but also B2B, where, where it's easy to think you have a need, sit down at your computer and do a quick Google search and find all of the companies that could fill your need. So everyone out there is going to be Google searching your competitors. How do you stand out as a competitor so that you, uh, so that from your competitors, so that you remain in the awareness cycle so that they consider purchasing from you? Uh, and you got to get them to the point where they're, they're using the tools to engage with you so that you have the opportunity, your salespeople have the opportunity uh, to sell to them during their purchase cycle. So that once they purchase, that's where it starts today, right? It used to be that's where the process ended. And once they purchase, that's great. We're gonna service them and that's it. Now that's where the process starts. That's where you create loyal brand advocates so that people talk about you, engage with you and start and talking about their experience with you uh, online so that the next prospect that is looking for your product, you become part of their awareness cycle, not only because of what you do through your sales and marketing automation processes, but through your happy customers and their conversations about you. So how do you, how do you create this kind of environment for engagement where people talk about you and, and you can get this 360 degree view of the customer, uh, not only from the customer standpoint, but your partners, your influencers and other things. So it, it all starts with, with your employees, right? So when you publish something online, when you send out an email through marketing automation, 
you want your employees to interact with it. You want them to know that it was sent. You want that to be part of your normal business process so that they can, uh, so that that post or that content or that email has some level of follow-up for your salespeople. Uh, so, so that's what you want. That's the first step. That's kind of the low-hanging fruit where, where if you, you post something online and the boss says, hey, you know, I want you to go interact with it. You know, the employees are, of course, going to go do that. And once they start getting into that habit of interacting, now you can ask your influencers, your partners, your the same people that will benefit. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. You know, it's, it's easy in lots of different industries to understand it. But think about that, the realtor that needs the mortgage person, the realtor that needs, you know, the home inspector. You know, it's easy to see who their partners are. Maybe you're a lender and uh, you need, you need uh, more programs. So you have a lot of influencers that you work with to help with your decision. Maybe you're a software company and you need you know, uh, Steve, Sean, and their team to, to implement the software solutions for you. So the second level is those influencers. So get them to engage with you. And then third is, is your customers. Once you have your employees and it's a transparent environment, engaging and you have your influencers engaging, you'll get past customers to start talking about you to create this environment for engagement where people are going to uh, continue to talk about you online. And at that point, you may get prospect interaction. And that's really what the goal is. But if you don't set the foundation for your prospects, they're not going to feel comfortable giving you that commitment and endorsement until you have the other three uh, areas. And the reason today we're gonna talk about marketing automation so heavily is because not only through COVID and, and you know, some of the other uh, transitional things that we're going through right now, uh, but, but with the transition and the growth of digital technology, 31% growth year over year for marketing automation platforms. We are, we are definitely in an area where we need help communicating in a way that our customers hear us, our customers see us, our prospects know what's going on, whether that, again, SharpSpring offers tools like uh, marketing automation, visual workflows, uh, and things like that that we're going to get into. They also offer chatbots and ways that you can enhance or improve the experience on your website with simple automation tools that we're going to talk about also a little bit today. because. You know, if your competitors are growing at a rate of 31% and you're not, you're going to be left behind. And really what you need to help your sales team with is this concept of the 360 degree view of the customer and the prospect. And CRM does a great job of tying it all together. What marketing automation is on the front end of CRM is adding that prospect automation and uh, continuous nurturing automation to your customer relationship tool so that everyone gets the same kind of interaction. We're gonna talk about that integration uh, here in a little bit, but, but what makes marketing automation so, so great for us and us? And, and as Sean said, you know, we use SharpSpring uh, and we selected SharpSpring among all the other solutions, not only because of the cost, because, but also because of the effectiveness. Um, uh, it's similar to what, you know, Marketo does and, and uh, uh, you know, MailChimp or Constant Contact on steroids that, you know, they're, they, those uh, systems uh, fail by comparison in terms of functionality. But, but what SharpSpring does is it allows you to, to see when visitors come to your website, whether they are, um, uh, once you've sent them email, once they've visited your website, you'll know every time they come back, you'll be able to see the kind of activity that they uh, do, you know, the things that they do and the actions they take on your website. Uh, and you'll be able to associate those activities and the information you have about them. And through the integration, what the salespeople do with them, you'll be able to associate a lead score to them. And you'll know what campaign they came from. Uh, in this case, you can see it's a direct traffic unit and it was, I was added nine months ago and my lead score is 143. Uh, and in my system, 
I know what 143 means. And that can be customized and set up so that you know what 143 uh, as a lead score means to you. Actually, uh, because I go to our website a lot, it's a, it's a higher number. Um, but, but ours are based on, you know, about 150 to 200 are the hot leads, uh, 100 to 80 to 100 are good. And, and with us, um, with the way that we've set it up, and again, it's customizable and configurable at SharpSpring, you know, I give an extra point to any page on our website that a customer visits. We give five extra points for someone that fills out a form. I give extra points for when someone tells us their location and, and things like that. If they fill out the form that says they're looking for a website project or they want us to do content marketing or they have a graphic design project, they get points for that. If they come back to our website uh, and they haven't been there for a while, they get points for that. So we completely configure how we generate what that lead score is uh, because we want to look at our prospect database in our, our marketing automation tool to understand which of those prospects should be followed up with by our salespeople. So, so think about it this way, the lead score, uh, think about the lead score this way. If, if your sales cycle, and ours is a little bit longer, if your sales cycle is like a year or two, uh, like ours is, sometimes it, you, know, you don't know that you need a new website for a year and you're gonna build one next year. Or be, so our sales cycle is a little long. If someone evaluates us and then they don't visit our website and then six months after they visited our website and they go to a page where they look at website development, and I get a notification in my CRM tool that this prospect just came back to my website, that's very valuable information out of a tool like, like this. So, so how do I then use that to create marketing automation so that, so that I'm not only generating leads and as a salesperson, as the driver of our process, how do I not only generate those leads, but use marketing automation to schedule an appointment or create brand awareness or, or drive sales so that I can uh, win, uh, hit the checkered flag or, or really achieve our goals. So that's how I want you to think about marketing automation, you know, for the, for the next 45 minutes or, or, or an hour or so. Um, and again, in, in SharpSpring, they have this really cool defined lead score tool that's called the life of the lead. You can see in the uh, uh, line in the in the uh, in the timeline when someone visited our website, when we sent them an email, when they opened an email. There are a lot of different activities that are logged every time someone takes action. And your salespeople, your marketing folks, they can look at each of these actions as a trigger and schedule some type of marketing automation off of them. We're going to talk about the easy ones uh, in our conversation today when someone fills out a form or when you have an event that you want to invite people to and what happens then, uh, or when they visit your website and uh, prior to either live chat or, or sending an email, you want to give them some tools that they can uh, uh, that can help them in a live chat chatbot environment. Um, we're going to talk about that, but but defining the lead score in a timeline so you can see uh, what they do and when they do it online is is definitely critical information for for your sales team uh, to use. Uh, and again, your your pit crew, the the automation can be set up very easily. And here's a a relatively simple example of a of a, an action group or a workflow. They're all kind of set up the same where, where the trigger happens in the very beginning. Uh, it's hard to read, uh, but you can see that, you know, someone visited the website and they filled out the form and the form had two possible answers. And if they answered it one way, they go down the left tree. And if they answered it a second way, they go down the right tree. And then they, they from this workflow, they enter the gray area box, which is an action group. And the action group, those are, those are email integrations that are email messages that go out and there's time in between when one might happen or when they, the next thing might happen. So someone fills out a form on your website. Uh, if the form says that they're interested in websites, they get one series of events. 
If the form says they're interested in, in graphic design, brand, or content, they get another series of events. They, they instantly get an automated piece that says, thank you for registering on my website. Uh, uh, Steve Lukowicz is going to be in touch with you shortly. And then the system creates a to-do item for Steve that says, Mitch Levinson was just on our website and they filled out a form and they're interested in, in uh, CRM or branding or whatever it is. And Steve now has an activity for him to follow up directly with them. Steve does his sales process totally separately from marketing automation, but three or four days later, this record now gets another follow-up to it. You know, I know you've been in touch with Steve talking about your new website, but, but uh, do you realize that, that when you build a new website with us, you'll get six times the industry average in terms of conversion? You know, those are important follow-up emails to get so that the marketing automation engine can help your salesperson with their anywhere between five and 12 touch points before they're ready to make a decision. Because we all know as marketers, someone has to see your product, they have to see your brand, they have to become aware of you and somewhere between five and 12 times for them to be ready to make a purchase decision. So marketing automation does some of that, really a lot of that. And then Steve Lukowitz, your salesperson, they do all of the hand-holding, the touch points, the very specific uh, 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 sales process uh, for that sales uh, to happen. So again, the marketing automation could be, you know, workflow, action, action groups, uh, chatbots. It could be driven by any number of different triggers that could happen uh, at a form level. It could happen at a record level. It could happen, you know, based on an opportunity or a, a proposal that was sent out. There's a lot of different things that can be set up uh, for that to happen. And then, and then what could be sent are not only regular emails, but also smart mails. So think of a smart mail as uh, a mail merged email draft ready to go that would fill in the, the name and information of the record, but that the, the salesperson or the marketing person could edit on the fly if they need to, to send them something personal, slightly different in a semi-automated way. I would be reminded of it. I would go and I would create the email. I, I could either send it or schedule it to be sent, or I could customize it and personalize it directly for my prospect uh, and buyer. So that's the, all of that makes it a lot easier for me as a salesperson to work smarter and be more effective by using a lot of these very effective tools. And really the goal of these tools is to create some sort of call to action. You're trying to, to be in front of the prospect, the customer, the past customer, you're trying to be in front of them so that they take some sort of an action, so that they take some sort of a sales action and ask for more information and be curious, give them a little bit of a taste of what they're looking for and have them want more. So these triggers for this marketing automation could be set up for, with um, uh, or behind what you see here on the screen on the, on the left as a chat bot, which, which sits very clearly on the bottom right of our website. If you visit our website, you would see this chat bot or on a contact form, which again is very clearly invisible on our website. So I'm trying with our marketing and our marketing automation to create an environment where our prospects and customers are comfortable asking us questions in a way that they know not only they're gonna get the response, but they're gonna get a response from an expert that knows what they're talking about in a timely manner that's designed specifically to help them with their need and their process. Uh, because at the end of the day, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And I'm trying to build that relationship through marketing automation so that my salespeople can give them personalized service. So that's really where, where we're trying to get to that, that call to action. Uh, and a series of uh, email marketing templates and, and campaigns. You know, I, I don't know if I have anyone on the call today or if you're listening uh, to this that, that, um, that 
used to be afraid of having your salespeople, you know, send out emails or, or interact with people in social media, you know, I, I want my salespeople to sell. And that, that mentality, that thought process, I never really understood because your salespeople are the front line of offense. They are the person that your prospects are going to be in contact with most. It makes the most sense to put them in the front. It makes the most sense for your salespeople to be the face and the ones who are interacting with you on social media. Now, I agree that salespeople may not always know what to write or say. And I agree that they may not, you know, they're out there, you know, having fun, driving business. They're, if they're hunters, they're hunting. If they're farmers, they're farming, you know, for business. But marketing automation gives you the ability to give them the tools so that they, they know what to write. And you help them with that script or that message in, a, in, a, in an email template, in a smart mail template in a, you know, even if it's a Word document that you help them with what their social update should be. You know, how do you, again, give your salespeople the tools so they say the right things to the right people so that it helps them drive revenue? That's what these uh, email marketing templates are, are all about. And, and you can create, you know, an unlimited number of them for, for all different purposes. And then you can create that, that series, that drip campaign so that, uh, uh, they can be contacted. We were talking before uh, that about email templates. Uh, and I was just about to talk about the importance and the value of uh, analytics and reporting behind uh, email marketing and marketing automation. So, so uh, there's a huge focus on, you know, improving your ability you know, we know that when we send out email marketing pieces, we're going to get roughly 30% uh, open rate and, and anywhere between one and a half and 2% from a click-through rate, depending on what the content is in that e-blast. And, you know, that's really important for improvement. I don't know what, what kind of results uh, your team is getting when you're sending out different uh, email marketing messages to your current existing customer base or prospects that you either met at a trade show or filled out a form on your website or wherever you're getting your prospect list from. But making sure that you build key performance indicators into your process and understand how to use them uh, strategically to make adjustments so that you improve on those numbers every time you run something, that's what's important. So the metrics are only good. Data is only good if you turn it into information and you use it. So when we first started with SharpSpring uh, and some of these tools, our open rates were in the, in the, in the low 20s. Uh, and I think for marketing agencies, our industry average uh, is about 20 to 24%. So we were, we were, we were good, uh, but we were not great uh, in terms of open rates. And being able to have a tool that, that, that shows who opened, how often, you know, what they were looking at, where they were clicking, you know, and all of the things that it does, not only in the one single e-blast that I send out, but, but in the six or seven long series of emails that I send out, which ones are clicked on more often and which ones do better. We've been able to improve that number up, uh, as you can see right here, uh, up to just over 30%. So, you know, having more effective marketing touch points uh, is very significant in your marketing automation uh, tool and program. And again, you can look at what people are clicking on, you know, what they're looking at, you know, where they're going and what type of activity they're, they're performing while they're on your, uh, on your site, uh, while they're looking at your email, while they're consuming your content. And, and really, that is what is important in today's market, right? How do I get people to consume my content so that they are aware and consider me the expert when they're making their purchase decision? That's the value of, of marketing automation. And again, as the driver, I want my salespeople to be fully armed and aware of all of these things that happen. So again, uh, and Steve's gonna talk about this uh, at the end when we talk about integration into the CRM tool so that 
your salespeople can see a full 360 degree view of not only the customer, but the prospect and the communication they're getting, not only from your salespeople, but from everyone else in your company, including your marketing automation engine, uh, so that the driver can drive sales. Uh, and again, marketing automation can create a lot of different types of things. They can send out smart mail, they can uh, create sales tasks, they can you know, track communication, you can add notes. There's a lot of different things uh, that you can do and see along the way in this you know, marketing automation uh, tool set. You can also uh, log calls and write notes about activities that your salespeople take when they're calling on the customer because you know we all know that you know people uh, uh, in person is much more effective than email. Email is good for branding and and sharing communication in, in quick snippets, but but nothing is going to replace a good salesperson looking you in the eye, shaking your hand specifically, calling you on the phone, sending you a handwritten thank you note, and all of that needs to be logged and added to your CRM system and combined with what happens in marketing automation so your salesperson can do the best job that they can possibly do. Uh, so again, you know, help, having help so that your salespeople can work smarter uh, and not harder uh, based on you know, some of this uh, marketing automation, automated sales tasks uh, that can happen. Um, so here is an example of an action group. There's a custom field date of interest. So we're gonna talk about our podcast recording uh, in a little bit. Um, but you can see that there's something happened, a date happened and our podcast was released. Uh, and then a notification was sent. The email was sent to the guest about it. Uh, and then a notification was sent to the salesperson so that they can follow up with that lead. And all of that happens in the activity. And then I get in my activity a to-do list item for, for what I need to do and, and how I need to communicate with that, with that lead. Uh, and when something happens, I then create a note uh, in the system so that anyone that sees behind it, anyone that follows up with that customer after me can see the communication that has happened that I've done, that they've done, and we all have uh, visibility into that uh, customer uh, so that we can uh, do the best we can. Because again, at the end of the day, it is all about staying connected and it's all about that 360 degree view of the customer and it's creating that customer interaction uh, and engagement uh, uh, so your salesperson can, can do their job most effectively. So that was the first part of our process where we talked about uh, strategic marketing automation as it related to, you know, kind of that, that overview uh, based on a form and something like that. And before we get into uh, automation for events, uh, I just wanted to open up if anyone had any uh, quick questions uh, or, or uh, anything I should elaborate on more before we move on to the next area. Mitch, one of the questions that we received was what, you know, if, if you haven't gotten into a program like this, what would you recommend be some of the initial steps taken? Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. If you have not yet done any sort of uh, marketing automation or even email marketing, the first step is looking at your prospect list and, and cleaning the list to make sure that you have uh, real names, usable names and people that you've captured uh, personally from your website, you've captured over time. Um, and then once you have that, that list cleaned and you are able to use it, it's the strategy and thinking through what is it that, what kind of messages do I wanna make sure that they receive? How do I wanna set them up? What triggers and actions, what's the strategy? What are the triggers and actions that are cause, that will cause uh, uh, a marketing automation campaign to be triggered. So someone fills out a form, that's an easy one. Someone goes to Facebook and uh, posts something or asks you a question. Someone sends an email to your salesperson. Someone um, goes into their, their uh, record and updates a field. Um, uh, someone, you know, your salesperson sends them a proposal. Um, there are a lot of triggers and a lot of things that we need to think about. So, so the first step is making sure you have a good list. The second step is 
brainstorming all of those triggers that you may want to build a campaign towards. And then the third step is uh, building that campaign. Um, so, so strategically speaking, you want to make sure that you have that thought through before you start start looking at. It. We're going to see at the end uh, a very serious uh, uh, workflow automation uh, that I built for for our chatbot, um, and uh, uh, it's definitely pretty cool. And there, it's it's definitely uh, intricate and, and intense. Um, but at the same time, you know, once I thought through what it was that I wanted to build and that I thought my website visitors were going to have questions about, it was really kind of easy to build. Um, um, you know, and I looked at where they went on the website and what their user behavior was and what kind of questions I typically got in the, you know, request information, ask questions field. Um, 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 but, but that would be, uh, Steve, where I, would, where I would start them out. You know, first is the list, second is the trigger, and third is the campaign. Great, thank you, Mitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on uh, to uh, strategic marketing. So let's say that that you have an event, and and we had an event. We we do a podcast, and uh, we did have a special guest on our podcast in season four, episode twenty five. Uh, Sean Grant, uh, he was uh, our guest for our podcast. So so in Sharp Spring, we set up an event uh, driven. Uh, workflow. And, and just in case you all were very interested in hearing uh, uh, Sean talk about uh, marketing for Takara and Pivotal and, and his solution, it's a great episode. You can you can go to uh, Spotify or Apple or wherever you listen to podcasts and just search for Staying Relevant uh, and Sean Grant, and you'll be able to find the, the episode. So it's pretty cool. You're definitely going to want to want to want to hear him uh, and what, it, what he had to say. And it was definitely cool. But so we set up this podcast and for us uh, setting up an event for a guest to come and record was one workflow. The second workflow was based on the guest and the podcast being released and having it launched. So you can see that there were really two events contained in this one event. So we built two different workflows and action groups surrounding these two events. Um, but, but uh, the one that we're gonna demonstrate here is, is the, the podcast recording date. So, so before that date, uh, and, and it was a couple of weeks before, uh, our logistic person uh, and our graphic designer uh, were both sent notifications that uh, this date is about to happen. And Sean uh, got an email that was the introduction that said, you know, send to our graphic designer your bio and your headshot and all the other information that we're going to need through the podcast. You know, here are a series of questions that we may want to ask and that you are going to want to uh, be prepared for and, you know, maybe type up and send to us so we can have an open dialogue and a conversation. Uh, and then and then here's a little bit of logistics. Uh, and then the day before the event, that happened a week before the event. And then the day before the event, Sean got another reminder that said, uh, well, in Sean's case, because we did it via Zoom, here is the Zoom link for your podcast. But in that same email, because it is a smart and dynamic email, uh, we have podcasts that come out and actually record in person uh, still. Um, there was a time period that they didn't through COVID, but, but anyways, they come out, we do it socially distant, and we wear masks uh, some of the time. Uh, and... Uh, we do socially distant in-person podcasts. So that paragraph in that same email, one email, two different paragraphs based on whether it's a Zoom or an in-person recording has different information. One is the address of the studio and one is the Zoom link and directions to the studio and don't forget to log on five minutes early and different information for uh, differences. But again, the same simple single email so Sean received the email very specific and personalized to his recording experience. But also on that day, uh, the day of recording, uh, after the recording, Sean got an email that said, hey, you might want to, you know, go on your social media accounts and, you know, like our page and, and say that you really appreciated the recording and you're looking forward to whatever the future date was going to be that this was going to be released. So you can start teasing your audience. So we use it for our guests to help create urgency for their episode in their environment. 
So we're building this kind of urgency for them and reminding them through email marketing automation to do it when is appropriate. And by the way, in that same email, we've given them what we think works as an update. So they literally have to cut and paste and change a couple of things or add the date uh, and tag us in it. And they're ready to go. We, we make it so simple for them. And all we've done is written that script once and it's sent out regularly uh, to the guest at the appropriate time when they get it. Uh, so, so again, it, it also sends me, just so you know, uh, uh, I get a sales task to go in and look at the metrics of that recording a week later. And uh, I then also get a reminder to make sure that I like it on, on Facebook and, and on LinkedIn. And, and I go and I try to build some level of awareness for it through my channel. So I get that same kind of sales task reminder in our um, uh, uh, CRM system uh, because, because again, this marketing automation is not just for prospect development. It's also to create this environment for engagement so that your employees, your salespeople, and your even the president of the company might want to know when a podcast or an event is happening so that they can take action that affect the awareness within their sphere of influence online or, or natively. So really, really definitely helps out the show. So uh, an example uh, after uh, the fact of an email that we've written uh, also includes this, this really simple, uh, please also go to Google and review our site and give us a five-star review. So we're also building into this process reputation management so we can enhance our reputation. Uh, Sean said that over 450 implementations of Pivotal and they have a 9.9 .9 out of 10 rating. Could you imagine how many more positive reviews they would get if they sent an email, an automated email, every time an implementation was successful and happened that went out automatically for the last, they probably have already been doing it anyways. Um, but uh, Well, we haven't. That's a great idea. We, we, we don't in an automated way, we do manually. So whenever we've complete a project, uh, we, 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 if it's a, a large from the beginning project, we do customer story and usually includes doing a video of it. Um, but otherwise we do an interview over the phone and, and get a customer story that way. So, but uh, I think that's a great idea, Mitch. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. And, and quite honestly, it, it, gets, uh, it gets a lot of people to think about interacting with you uh, online. And, and again, from a, from a prospect standpoint, you know, when someone goes online and they go to Google and they search for companies, the ones that they always end up clicking on and the ones that always end up higher in the list are those that have positive reviews. And again, I'm not talking about whether it's B2C or B2B or anything. No matter what you're looking for, if you have a lot more positive reviews than neutral or negative ones, and you handle in a transparent way the neutral or negative ones, and you focus on the positive ones, you're what Google is going to think is the expert and the guru. So focus on, on, on setting up the reminders through marketing automation so that your salespeople, your operational folks, your influencers, your customers, and now even some guests that came to an event take some sort of action in a positive way to promote you and your company. And that will inherently drive traffic right back to, to, to you uh, and, and help your salespeople with, with driving leads. Uh, as, I, as I said before, um, you know, I'm gonna share with you our, our chatbot automation. Which is, which is very cool. It, it, uh, it didn't take very long. And, and this next slide is gonna be a little overwhelming. So we're gonna prepare you for it right now, uh, but it's very cool. Um, once I mapped it out, uh, it, was, it was relatively easy and simple. It only took about two hours to put together. So when someone comes to our website, we basically sell you know, four kinds of things, right? Uh, websites, graphic design, social media, content, uh, and strategy. Um, um, so it's, you know, think about it in that context. So I got four or five different trees that, that end up running in the same way. 
And, and it's, it's a, a chatbot is a series of automation questions and answers that they can ask. So if you look at this one, it says, what can I help you with? So they're, they're just here getting some tips or they need help and they wanna know what we offer or they need more leads and sales, which is also a sales pitch, uh, or you know they want an appointment and I'm gonna go directly to my contact form. If they click the first one, they're just here getting some information, you know, we, we really don't do a lot with them, but the other three, we're gonna take them through a series of question and answers, which will ultimately lead them into a form so that we will know what they're going to answer. So here is the chatbot uh, automation that we set up uh, for the bottom of our screen. And if you go to our website and you click on the little chatbot, you will see the whole thing in place, but it's really not that, not that uh, difficult. So these are the questions. And then right here, based on their answer, they have four different answers that they could possibly answer. And then through the answer, they go through it. They, they, if they say they're interested in websites or one of our products eventually, or all of our products because they want an integrated marketing program, they would get a series of emails. And that's what these green dots are. This is our action group email marketing automation workflow that's triggered straight from our chat bot. Uh, and then at the end of the day, they all end with uh, either a form, someone's going to fill out a form and there's a sales task, or they end with some information that we're just giving to them and they can go on their merry way and and track, uh, and, and we're going to be tracking what they're doing on the website, which is pretty cool. So again, in the life of the lead, they're going to have that that globe that we visited your website icon with some of this information on it. Because again, it's very critical in the 360 degree view of the customer that you know what they do on your website. You know what action they're taking. You know what email they're opening. You know that they're getting a series of automations and you know what they're, what they're thinking about. Um, so that your salespeople, uh, and again, whether it's an existing customer and your salespeople is farming and trying to upsell them or resell them, or whether they're a new customer and your salesperson is, is hunting for new business uh, and trying to capture them for the first time and take them away from your competitor to, to increase your market share, you know, you're trying to give them the tools that they need so that they can work uh, smarter and not harder. And all of these tools, everything that I've shown you, there's a lot of it that can be integrated directly into your CRM system so that your salesperson, when they're working in their CRM system, has the view into what's happening with that particular customer. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, I am going to turn it over uh, to Steve Lukowitz, who is going to share with us a little bit about you know, integrating uh, with CRM. Great, thanks, Mitch. Uh, that was extremely informative. Um, can we change the slide? There you go. So, you know, uh, as was mentioned uh, earlier, it's we feel it's really critical that your marketing automation engine and your CRM engine uh, integrate. Uh, for a salesperson, they want to have one tool to go to to really get that 360 degree view that Mitch spoke about earlier. Of, of the customer. They want to see where the first point of contact was. They want to see any activity, any communications. Uh, they want to see when they've been to the website, what information they've requested, so forth and so on in one place. So what we've done was we've ac actually developed uh, integration between both the Marketo and the SharpSpring uh, tools uh, with Evelyn. And that is a bi-directional integration. So information's coming from the marketing automation into CRM and then from CRM back into marketing automation because as statuses change uh, or, or things like that uh, change, you want to be able to either put people in or take them out of a campaign automatically so that you're not sending them information. Once they've become a customer, you don't want to start, you don't want to continue to send them uh, emails that are trying to get them as a customer or get them into the door or whatnot. So it's very important that that integration uh, take place and that it be as transparent as possible. Next slide. So think about it. You know, your leads come in from your website. It's very important that that information hits the uh, the salesperson, and typically that's going to hit as part of their their portal, uh, their dashboard. You know, what what they're working off of. They want to be able to see these are new opportunities. Uh, and emails may have just gone out to them, 
Uh, but what information have they provided so that I, as a salesperson, can get back to them and provide them with the information that they need and that they requested? Uh, marketing campaigns. You're going to want to know what campaigns they were sent. They may be, you know, you may want to call them about a particular campaign or a particular offering or a particular product or service that, you're, that you've got available. You want to be able to know exactly what information that they got. So when you're speaking to them, you can speak as um, educated as possible and provide the right insight. Event management. So, you know, Mitch spoke about the podcast. Uh, think about what, you know, your your process that we, that we followed for today's um, seminar. Uh, the information that you received all came out of uh, Sharp Spring also, but then hit our pivotal uh, CRM system so that we can go on to the system and actually see who's attended, uh, from which company, uh, who uh, actually opened up the, the email, what they did with it, and then, of course, tie that into opportunities and follow-ups and have that, again, that 360-degree view. Contacts, being able to get uh, new contacts either through the website or somebody referring uh, somebody. So in this case, we had some people that actually referred somebody from their marketing department to attend. We want to be able to set that contact up within our CRM system based on the information that's coming in through our marketing automation tool. And then of course, opportunities, as I mentioned earlier, really getting a good feel for uh, how an opportunity hit, how, you know, how did you get that lead? How did that form into an opportunity? What campaign did that tie into? And what are some of the next steps so that you can continue that drip campaign through, uh, through you know, longevity or as long as you need it and make sure that you know, again, as much as possible that's coming out of your CRM and bringing that back into your marketing automation tool. Here's some examples of uh, some of the dashboard items that we follow. So, you know, event by uh, attendees and we're having a series of uh, the CRM evolution events and we wanna be able to see, you know, where people have attended and then be able to drill down uh, so, for example, the event by attendees, if you look at the, um, you can actually drill down and see who attended what, what opportunities, uh, uh, you know, directly were uh, tied into that event, so forth and so on. And that's just one example of information from an analysis and reporting purpose that you can follow so that you can see how effective, an, in this case, an event or a campaign was and what were the driving factors that came out of it. Uh, do we have any questions? Okay. So why don't we talk about some of the different services that we offer as a team? Um, we, you know, we certainly offer marketing automation and nurturing, uh, being able to set up campaigns and set up uh, a lot of the things that Mitch spoke about today. Uh, we're here to support you on that. Uh, website development and lead capture. Uh, our team, uh, along with Mitch, can actually help you with your website, make sure that it's as effective as possible and that you're capturing as many leads and then bringing them through the whole marketing automation and integrating that, of course, with, with your CRM. Strategic marketing and consulting, working with you to really figure out what is the best approach for marketing within your environment and then supporting you through that process. Digital advertising and lead generation, uh, contact marketing and lead generation. There's a lot of different areas that we as a team can help you with. Uh, and, you know, if you've got any interest in any of that, you know, please see, uh, you know, either myself, Mark, or John, you know, whoever you work with at, at Takara. So again, we've gone through a lot here today. Uh, this was just meant to be the tip of the iceberg in terms of opportunities for how marketing automation can help you. And, um, you know, we're here to support you any way we can um, and answer any questions that you may have. So. Uh, All right. Very good. Thanks, a pretty Steve. quiet group. But uh, do we have any other questions that have come through? Very good. Uh, we'll give it a couple more minutes in case any other questions pop up. Certainly you've got our email addresses. So. Uh, just shoot us an email if uh, if you think of something after this presentation. We we'd love to answer the question for your or research it and get back to you for sure. Um, so just wait a couple more minutes here and see if there's anything else. I want to thank Mitch Levinson. Great presentation. Thanks for taking your time. 
uh, out of your busy day, I know, and and uh, taking us through how you use Sharp Spring marketing automation and, and what you guys do for your business. I think that was really good. And and Steve, thanks thanks for uh, touching on those slides as well. Great. Yep. Thank you very much for having me. So uh, the you bet. Thanks, Mitch. Um, the point of contact for this presentation, if there was one email address to remember, it's Steve Lukewitz, S Lukewitz at Tokara solutions.com. Um, or you can just go to Takara solutions.com and you can get at, you can get uh, access to us there as well. Right. We'll, we'll actually be posting this on our, on our website so people can have access to, to the presentation. Correct, Sean? That is correct. Yes. And let's see, I will just put um, your, your email address here uh, in chat. Mitch, any uh, closing remarks or any closing ideas that you want to leave the group with? No, I just want to want to say thank you very much for uh, allowing me uh, to speak to to some of your customers. And uh, you know, if they have any questions about you know marketing automation or or setting it up or anything related to you know helping to build a funnel so that salespeople can work you know smarter and not and not harder and and giving them the tools that they need to to get in touch with you uh, or get in touch with me through you um, because we. Uh, we, I, it's just something that we enjoy doing. Um, Excellent. At it. Yeah. So, sounds good. I, I know you've been doing it for about 20 years. So uh, yeah, you know, you've got great experience. Yep. Yep. All right. Very good. Then we'll close out the session. Thank you everybody uh, for attending. Hope you all have a great day and please don't be shy. Reach out if you have any questions. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks again. Thanks everybody.